I've been asked for years if the move to cloud affects the legitimacy or the relevance of the CIO. And nothing could be more mistaken. Because what we have now is the chance for the CIO, in fact, to be working with the role of chief information, or sometimes people say chief innovation officer, and not the chief IT officer. We're going to take, we are taking, the vast majority of non-value-adding complexity off the plate of the CIO, taking them out of the role of being the chief hardware procurement installation and management officer, and instead saying, look, we'll do that. You should be saying, what information do I acquire? What analysis do I perform? What collaboration do I enable so that my people can be adding value and I can be exposing that value to customers in a way that makes us defy commoditization and really carve out superior distinctive brand engagement. If you think about it, so many of the conversations we had in the past were chunk for chunk. Replace my legacy CRM with a SaaS CRM and save some money. Replace my legacy test and um, validation server with the cloud and get more elasticity. And it was a, a direct mapping, chunk for chunk. And what we need to do is say, it's not about more, better, cheaper chunks. It's about a new and more continuous milieu in which you can have the things you need all brought to bear on the customer who's on your mind at the moment. I've been asked for years if there were certain things that would continue to be done on-premise indefinitely. Every time that I thought I could find an example, high-performance scientific computing, for example, or elaborate um, engineering calculations, I've always discovered in a very short time that someone had already discovered that the cloud was still a better way to do it. Sometimes they'll take old Fortran code and rewrite it as parallelized Fortran to take advantage of scalable elasticity of, of server pools. It's not that you need to rewrite things, it's that if you're prepared to consider the possibility, you may discover enormous order of magnitude or more improvements in cost effectiveness. And so, is there anything that I think should remain on premise because it's better there? Absolutely not. Are there things that will remain on premise for some time? Yes, because there may not be a business case for taking something that's working now and moving it to the cloud. You don't do this just to prove that you can. But when someone reaches a moment of a moment of bifurcation, a speed bump, where they say, gee, to use this vendor upgrade, we'll have to refresh the hardware. To use this upgrade, we'll have to re-implement all of our customizations. Maybe this is the time not to do that upgrade. Maybe this is the time to adopt a cloud-based alternative. What we are doing with Salesforce One is creating a milieu in which people with expertise to offer now have a far superior path to market by which to make that expertise available to people in a form that they can use. And people with needs can take many different resources of information and expertise in the form of executable apps, bring them together in a container in their hand that doesn't preserve the 32-year-old desktop metaphor, but gives us a fundamentally better metaphor of the feed and the moment of interaction with the customer who's on my mind right now. And that, I think, is what the mobile user requires. And increasingly, we are all primarily mobile users. The mobile device is not an accessory anymore. And for the first time, we're really providing IT with an organizing metaphor that's entirely natural for that mobile world. The Israeli ISV market is, is one that I frankly covet. I want, I want the concentration of original thinking and, and entrepreneurial talent that I know exists in that marketplace to see Salesforce One in the way that developers 20 years ago saw Windows as being by far today the most direct path to get an idea into a marketplace and to make it available to the largest possible number of customers on whatever device they choose to use. And so I have, I have sometimes taken a somewhat provocative stance, which is that in the post-PC world, Salesforce One is the post-Windows.